I have in front of me here a 4x4 four four matrices. So basically, uh, the picture resolution to support is 4K by 2K. So um, the, the purpose of this is to take inputs from up to four different HDMI devices and then be able to distribute them to up to four different uh, monitors or output devices, TVs, etc. Uh, and the big uh, key point here is that any one of the four inputs can be displayed on any one of the four different outputs or any four of the TVs can choose to have inputs from any one of the four inputs. So um, it's pretty a uh, nifty piece of technology in terms of what it can do. We have other matrices in our range, but this one here is four by four is very, very popular. So what I'm gonna do in terms of the format of this video is as follows. I'm just gonna give an overview of exactly what comes inside the box. Okay, this is the outer box that comes in here. We will take a detailed look then at the matrices itself in terms of inputs, outputs. And then what we have, and the reason our table here is very, very crowded, is we just have set it up with two inputs, four outputs. I'm going to show you this thing here, and I'm also going to show the IR sensors in action as well. It's limited IR in terms of people's general uh, understanding of being able to change at the source TV. It's not like that but um, it's still it's nifty in terms of how we can do this. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna um, talk about uh, inside the outer box with the following things. We have a user uh, mini CD here with a user manual. We have a, a 12 volt, five amp output. We have a remote control, which I'll demonstrate in a few moments. We have these brackets here because the, the actual matrices here is rack mountable. And also then what we have is with sensors, we have both a TX, uh, sensors in terms of the receiver and we also um, have um, uh, as you can see here we ha have uh, RX for uh, receiver and TX for transmitter okay so what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to come around to the front of the unit here and I'm just going to give a quick overview okay just pick up a pen on route here so let's look at the actual inputs here first of all so we're going to spin the matrices around going to push it back and hopefully you better for the shot here. So what we have here is we have a total of four HDMI inputs, one, two, three, and four. And then, so this would obviously be our set-top boxes. And in terms of the four outputs then, one, two, three, and four. Um, and this obviously would be feeding our four TVs, okay? Uh, in terms of the power supply, what we have here is we have an external power supply that plugs in here. We have an on-off switch. And if I just rotate this around, just look at the back, or what in reality would be the front of the unit, because it's what we'd be accessing here. And this here is allowing us to choose for the outputs one, two, three, and four. We can flick through by pressing this button here repeatedly. Uh, the same here, the same here, okay? So this is giving us our four with four uh, inputs, uh, our output here with four inputs, our output here with four inputs, and output number four here with uh, four inputs. We have an IR sensor here, which we can use the remote control with. Basically here, what it's allowing us to do is to arrow over and flick them back for um, output one, two, three, and four. We can choose any one of the inputs here, and we can just aim it at it, do it that way. Uh, we have um, the IR sensors here. So we're gonna give a demonstration of this actually in action here, and I think it'll make it a lot clearer. But this basically is where we can aim the remote control and pick your set-top box and send the signal back out through it to be able to do it on the far end, okay? And um, when, what we have here then as well is we have our RS-232 cable. Traditionally, these are used just for changing software, things like that, and boxes. In reality, you'll almost definitely never use it. We have a dip switch set up here, and this is if you want to actually come along and make a very fine setting in terms of the HDMI settings that are used on it. But in general, you won't be touching this. You'll just be using it exactly as it is. Okay, so hopefully that's relatively clear. So then we'll just move on to the main event here, which is our pretty straightforward setup. So we have two set-top boxes. So we have a T8 and an M8 Android box, just as it happens. And we're outputting them to the two different TVs here. So just to discuss here, and I'm just gonna tip over to the far side here. If we just look, we'll say, at this M8 input here. It's going into input, uh, uh, HDMI input number one, and the T8 is feeding into HDMI input number two. And in terms of the output, we have two TVs here. So we have one feeding over to, um, I'm actually just gonna change this around just to make it a little bit different. Uh, we have an output, uh, one feeding to uh, the nearby television and output two going to the faraway television. But I'm actually just gonna change this to output number four over here, just to show that it still would work. 
set up where you have everything set up, just one, two. So what we'll do here is, so we, and the reason this is working here automatically is that we've output number four here, and uh, it's running over to the very far away TV here. So let's just go through here and we'll look anyway. So we see here anyway, we have um, we've a total of um, four, uh, we've a total of uh, four outputs here. So only two of them are currently being used. So we know we're using output number one and we're using output number four, right? So what I'll do here is, I'm just gonna come along here and output number one, I'm just gonna arrow across here. And it's now taking input number three, of which there's none. Input number four, there's none. And input one, there is. It'll be the same as the screen over here. And if I come along here and click again, it goes directly onto this here. And we can do the same with number four here. We'll go over here, we'll just flick over, and now we'll see we have the input there. And we'll just work through. Now, obviously, um, as we have no TV set up in output two or three, flicking those will make absolutely no difference. But what then I uh, would say, so we have this here, and we can obviously do the same here with this remote here. So if I came to option number one, so output number one, and I went for one, it'll flick it over to L1, which is that input here. Or if I came down along to output four here, and I chose option two in it, and just flick it over here. So it's quite neat from that perspective. Now what we could possibly want to do is, but say we have a situation where we've this mounted and we wanted to stack our boxes out of sight down here. What we could do is exactly what I'm doing here is, I've come along and I've actually come along and I've taken the first of the sensors here and I've run it from the IRTX, so the transmitter, and I've run that cable down here, and we've just mounted this directly in front of where the sensor on the, uh, the, the M8 unit is. And I've also then come along, and what I've done is I have a, a sensor here that's ready to pick up the remote here. So what we're gonna actually have is, we could have, we'll say, this back here locally, where we'd have the boxes hidden away, and then it allows us to operate them via these sensors here. We could have them numbered out. Or in theory then, I suppose, if we had much longer sensors, we could run them directly to uh, various things, but it, it wouldn't be normal. This is basically how they'd be using it if you were using the sensors. Probably in most setups you wouldn't be. But if we just come along, and I'll just give a quick demonstration here. If I come along here and I actually just go and hit the exit, uh, select button, we can see now we're actually changing it. And this is because the signal is there. And just to show that it's working via this, if I disconnect it here and hold the remote in the same position, we'll see there's nothing happening. Okay, and that's because it's picking up the signal here. So all we've done is we've really matched up this and this, fed it back to the corresponding box from the same HDMI output, which was output number one, and we're able to work it on that basis here. So it's pretty, um, pretty neat in terms of what we're able to achieve, uh, in terms of we have a very, very complicated setup in terms of inputs and outputs, but we're able to run it all through a single box. And then we have a very, very standardized setup in terms of we can come along and we can have a single place where we just say, this is one of the four outputs. We have four inputs here, and each one we're controlling independently. So it works absolutely brilliantly here. And it sits really well with the full range of sort of HDMI splitters, HDMI over cat senders, uh, the four by two matrices, various things like that are all available on the freetv.ie website.